Hi, this is the first slide, first video clip uh, for the Finance 331 Hybrid course. This is Chapter 2 Financial Statements, Taxes and Cash Flow. So what we're going to uh, see is, it's sort of the review of the accounting class and in fact you may have some duplicate stuff that you can find in the county. It means that uh, you may uh, need to review the counting stuff because I sometimes uh, really fast uh, and simply assume that you already know the materials. So uh, if you don't really understand the material very seriously then I suggest you go back to the ta county tax to, to talk about, I mean, to, to understand about the concept in this chapter. Alright? So let's move on. Let's start from balance. So it's basically the, uh, we learn uh, three th different types of the uh, financial statements. The first one is the balance sheet. So the balance sheet is simply the snapshot of the firm's assets, liability, and owner's equity. And it shows the current status of the firm like a, at a specific timing. It means that you only can find the balance sheet as of one timing. Like a, it's not the period, it's just one time. So specific time as well says such as the December 31st or January 1st or even like as of today, tomorrow or so. So and it, it will give you very important information about the, the asset you have and how much liability you have and how much equity you have. For asset, as you see, the next slide, you know, the left side is the asset side. So asset has current asset and fixed asset. Current asset is asset that can be liquidated. It means that that can be converted to cash within a year. And while the fixed asset is the asset that that is used for long-term investment. So current asset uh, includes cash, account receivables, some marketable security and also the inventories and any other asset that may be liquidated within a year. Next to current asset you can see the fixed asset amount. So fixed asset is the asset basically long-term asset. You use this long-term asset to operate and usually the, the this asset uh -huh, has two different types of the asset, tangible and intangible. Tangible is you can see, physical asset, intangible is sort of the asset that you cannot see. The right hand side is the liability and equity side, the, 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 the very top part is the current liability. Current liability is the liabilities, you know, that you need to pay back within a year, very short term, including the account receivable, any pay, I mean, account payable, I'm sorry, and any payables like wage payables, tax payable, things like that, any short term uh, debt. Next to uh, current liability, you can see the long term debt, which is the debt um, liability uh, that matured at uh, more than one year. So it's a bond, you know, um, any type of the, uh, long term borrowings. Next to liability, you can see the shoulders equity, the blue one here, and the shoulders equity is the basically your money, owner's money. So that's the snapshot of the firm. And as you see, the, 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 we actually check the uh, one important concept called the networking capital. Networking capital is the difference between the current asset and current liability. So it can be calculated by the current asset minus current liability. It should be positive for a healthy firm. So it, it usually positive as you see here. Here, do you have more current asset than current liability so that you have enough asset 
to pay this short term debt. If not, then you face liquidity problem. And what is the liquidity again? When you have some, some like a, when you sh are short of cash to pay your bill, then you need to uh, generate it by selling some asset, right? And uh, when you sell this asset, it's possible that you may uh, not um, sell it very quickly. So that's the problem, the time issue, speed issue, and also you may lose a lot of value. So suppose you only have like the fixed asset, like building one million dollars, you need to take out 100,000 from them, you still need to sell it, that million dollar building, and also you really need, may lose a lot of values by discounting because you are in urgent situation. But that's not a liquid asset. It's valuable in avoiding financial distress. Financial distress means that uh, the company has trouble, and if you are short of cash, then you are in trouble. So from the identity rule, sorry, identity rule of the very first slide in balance sheet, the asset should be same as liability and the shareholders equally. The reason is your asset here should be acquired by the liabilities, the borrowings, or the owners but equal. That's why this identity rule holds. So this is the example of the balance sheet in the United States. It's obviously very simplified form. The left side the asset, current asset, fixed asset, and the right side the liabilities owners equally. There's two different types of the fixed asset account you can find sometimes, which is the gross fixed asset and net fixed asset. And uh, we'll see later on actually what it is. Now Let's compare market value and book value, and that's basically the difference between the accounting and finance perspective. You know. So the book value is the value of asset liabilities equally. So your book as value of the asset from previous example here is in, in say 2010, 3,100. $12. I believe it's a million. So in, in fact, three billion one hundred twelve million dollars. That's the book value of these assets: cash, account, receivable, inventory, and fixed assets. And this is basically some of the num the the value book value of each account in assets. But the problem here is. So, for example, I mean, cash should be fine because cash is simply cash in the market too. But if you look at the say account receivable here, six hundred eighty million dollars, if you may not collect everything, then the value may be lower for market. Also, the fixed asset, you know, one billion seven hundred nine million dollars. That's the net fixed assets. It's possible that you may receive more money when you try to sell this um, fixed asset, or you may get the less value. So the book value is again the balance sheet value, the accounting value based on U.S. GAAP. The market value is the based on the supply and demand, true value in the market. So there are two questions maybe arise. Uh, market value, book value, very different actually, because the book value is simply calculated by the accounting rule, while the market value is the value in the market. Why? You know, you can answer, I think, that pretty easily, but the, the next one is hard, which is more important to the, the decision making process. That one we're gonna probably discuss in class. Now we have practice problem here so you know the balance sheet of your firm shows the current asset of $209,800 and then it includes cash 31100 account receivable 79700 and inventory 99000 so total $209,800 your net fixed asset account, book value 414500 So these values are all 
numbers you can see in the balance sheet, which is comprised of a building and some equipment. So that's the book part. Now the next one. You believe you can sell the inventory for seventy-nine thousand nine hundred. You expect to collect only seventy-five thousand six hundred of the account receivables. You can also sell the equipment for one hundred eighteen thousand. The building for three hundred forty-nine thousand. You see the difference between two paragraphs. The first paragraph always talks about the value in balance sheet, and second paragraph always talks about the potential value in the market. So the first paragraph talks is about the book value. The second paragraph is about the market value. What are the total book value and the market value? That's the question. So see the book value here. So let's see the book value. Book value. Book value is now you have current asset, how much? Two hundred nine thousand eight hundred. You have net fixed asset. Uh, four hundred fourteen thousand five hundred. So that's the count for the balance sheet. The total book value of this asset equals to two so these two numbers, right? So two hundred nine thousand eight hundred plus. 414,500 which is 624,300 dollars that's the book value so first answer is easy now let's look at the market value for market value you will cut the second paragraph but one thing you have to be very careful is you can miss cash because the cash book value equals to the market value. So the first item is cash, which is thirty-one thousand one hundred. The second item is say here inventory. Still, inventory is current asset item. The book value for inventory is seventy-nine. I mean ninety-nine thousand dollars, but you can actually sell the inventory for not ninety-nine thousand, it's so seventy-nine thousand nine hundred. So that's the market value. And then there's account receivables. You can only collect for part of that is seventy-five thousand six hundred. So that's the current asset market value. Thirty-one thousand one hundred plus seventy-nine thousand nine hundred plus seventy-five thousand six hundred, which is one hundred eighty-six thousand six hundred dollars. <throat> now let's look at the fixed asset part. Fixed asset, you have equipment, so equipment for one hundred eighteen thousand eight hundred, and building. Three hundred forty-nine thousand. So your fixed asset market value is hundred eighteen thousand plus three hundred forty-nine thousand, which is four hundred sixty-seven thousand dollars. If you add them up, that's the market value of this asset. So market value equals to one hundred eighty-six thousand six hundred plus. Four hundred sixty-seven thousand dollars, which is six hundred fifty-three thousand six hundred dollars. That's the market value. Okay? Again, market value may be different to book value because what? Because you may receive, you know, uh, cheaper or more or less money when you sell the market when you sell the asset in the market.
Okay. Now, I'm sorry, I got this one. Yep. Okay, let's look at the next item, which is income statement. So what is the income statement? The income statement is the performance statement. It measures the performance over the specific period, specified period of time, sometimes annually, sometimes quarterly, sometimes monthly, and sometimes weekly. We can make, make it daily, mostly quarterly annual report is very common. So from January 1st, 2015 to December 31st, 2015, I want to see how much sales we made, how much costs we spent, and what is the, the profit for that. It starts with repo uh, reporting revenues first, then deducts any types of the expenses for the period. And at the bottom, you can see the net income, which subtracts all the costs you spent. And then from net income, you can pay out the dividend to the shareholders, or you can add this money to return money to prepare for using it as an internal source of money. So the income statement should be should have the revenue minus all expenses should say as the net income obviously. That's the nature of the income statement. But type of uh, cost you can think about, you know, so this is uh, again the simplified one. The net sales is one billion five hundred nine million dollars here. So that's the revenues. Now cost of goods sold is seven hundred fifty million. So that's the the money that you paid when uh, for the corresponding sales that there's there is a 65 million dollars depreciation expense here so you will have the earnings before interest and taxes here which is also called EBIT, EBIT. EBIT. now from EBIT you pay interest you see the taxable income this taxable income here is the 624000 now. This tax can be calculated by your taxable income times your tax rate. Right? And the net income is 412000 Now you have two choices. You can pay out the part of the net income paid out to, as a form of dividend to shoulders also you can keep it inside of the firm. So as you see, interest is now tax deductible. It's the before tax money, right? Deductible. However, this dividend is not tax deductible. So there's a major difference between the debt financing and equity finance. Debt financing may give you some benefit for tax. So let's look at the tax issue because the tax is in fact very critical issue in most countries. There are two different types of the tax rate. One is the marginal tax rate, the other is the average tax rate. So I mean let's look at the average tax rate first. Most country has a bracket system, so not the, just the, uh, the fixed tax rate system. Everybody has different rate based on their income level. Right, like a letter. So, for example, if you look at the next slide, this is a corporate tax rate, um, and from first fifty thousand dollars, the tax rate is fifteen percent, and the next twenty-five thousand, you pay twenty-five, and then the next twenty-five thousand, thirty-four, and next two hundred thirty-five thousand, thirty-nine percent, and then from three three five, so. 335,000 to 10 billion, 10 million dollars is 34 percent, etc. You know, so in fact, even though you really make certain amount of money, you pay tax differently, right? Based on your tax rate. Uh, so that's the average tax. The average tax rate is simply the total tax bill, so the total tax amount you paid 
divide by taxable income. Now, there's a, another concept called the marginal tax rate. The marginal tax rate is the tax rate that you should pay on the next additional $1 earned. So for example, from this example, suppose you make, say, $75,000. And if you look at the 75,000 here, your tax rate is 25%, right? And then assume that you make one dollar more while it's the tax rate then if you look at the one dollar more which is the seventy five thousand one dollar and the rate goes up to thirty four percent so your marginal tax rate thirty four percent again another example if you, your income is taxable income is like eighty thousand dollars you need to you need you need to find out what kind of what tax rate will be applied to the eighty thousand one dollar and here from this table he did thirty four percent that's the marginal tax rate okay. so suppose suppose if you consider the project that would increase taxable income by one million dollars which tax rate should you use in your analysis I will leave discussion for the class think about it so you have pro you considering a, a, a new project that may generate one million dollar taxable income. When you analyze this project, what what types of the tax rate should you use? This is example. Suppose your firm earns four million dollars. So from this example, from this table, you make four million dollars taxable. Income. What is the firm tax liabilities? what is the average tax rate and what is the marginal tax rate okay. so first fifty thousand the rate is fifteen percent so you pay fifteen thousand times fifteen percent right which is Seven thousand five hundred. That's the tax for the first fifty thousand, and the next twenty-five thousand. You pay twenty-five percent of the tax. So twenty-five thousand times twenty-five percent, which is six thousand. $250. Next step, another $25,000 from $75,200K, which is 34%. So now another $25,000 times 34%, which is $8,500. And then now the bracket will be a little bit wide. It gets wider. So from 100k to 335k is 39,000. So it's going to be $235,000 times 39%, which is $91,650. And then finally, you have a very wide range here from 335k to 10 million, right? Which is 34% decrease, actually. And if you look at that, it's out of range. You only have $4 million, so the remaining part is the $4 million minus $335,000, which is the $3,665,000. That's the remaining taxable income. And tax 34%. So, 3665000 times 0.34, which is $1,246,100. So if at, if you add them this up, that's the tax liability. 
the tax liability should be seven in five hundred plus six thousand two hundred fifty plus eight thousand five hundred plus ninety one thousand six hundred fifty plus one million two hundred forty six thousand one hundred which is one million three hundred sixty thousand dollars that's the tax money you owe now the second question is what's average tax rate average rate is simply 1.636 million which is the tax you pay divided by 4 million which is your taxable income so it's actually 34 percent and the marginal tax rate is now the tax rate for four million and one dollars so if you look at the table it's going to be 34 percent that's how to compute the average tax rate and marginal tax rate the more important thing is not just computing the tax rate but also uh, you understand which one should you use for the project that actually be uh, in the previous slide, you know. So we'll talk about it in class about this issue. Right? So that's the end of the first clip of chapter 2, which include the balance sheet and the income statements. Next video clip will, will be the financial cash flow statements.